Hello, it's me. Uh, not quite a pause mode or game rave TV or even a present tense episode uh, this week. This is more of just a kind of relax. It's pretty much the end of the year. Uh, work is winding down for me as far as craziness goes. So, eh, let's chat. You always hear the phrase spring cleaning uh, during the spring as people are like, you know, cleaning out their house, throwing out stuff they don't use anymore, maybe donating it and everything. For me, that's this time of year. Um, it, it may have something to do with being New Year's and all and so forth. Like, you know, you want a fresh start. But I always try and treat December into January like my own personal living equivalent of a Game Plus mode. Um, you obviously don't want to lose anything you learned or bought from the year previous. But you want to go forward with new ideas, fresh thoughts, fresh starts. You know, maybe redo some things here and there you would, you would like to do. And today, I've talked about a lot of things I want to do and am doing uh, going forward. But I wanted to show you guys what it's actually like behind the scenes, if you will. If you watch a lot of YouTubers, their game room is always immaculate and they got cool things lying around. And, you know, obviously we all know that's, you know, what they cleaned up beforehand, stuff like that. And I know it looks crazy behind me and it's like, oh my God, like it looks like a giant, you know, library of awesomeness. Uh, but almost on a daily basis i am in this room either adding stuff to game rave or cleaning or rearranging or trying to figure out how to condense stuff into more boxes just so i can get more floor space back um so i figured just for fun and just to like relax and prep for the new year of game rave tv and all that good stuff um i'd actually show you what's actually like in here <laughs> currently going on um a lot of the reasons for that is i, I want to play my games again and as I mentioned in other videos going with the um, bi-weekly schedule starting in 2018, which is still weird to say, um, a lot of that was focused on actual game rave stuff, but it also pertains to other things in my personal life, like I miss drawing. Um, I don't know if any of you guys, have, how long of you guys have been watching me in this video, but um, I've done a kid's book that's on uh, uh, iBooks, God. Um, called The Boy with the Dreaming Key. And I did about three or four, uh, five books of it and so forth. And between Game Rave and trying to do the kids' book and do other side products, like the, the I was working on an actual uh, game catalog book, not PlayStation, but we'll get there. Um, and I just didn't have time to do everything. And so I kind of, at the time, Game Rave was starting to take off with Patreon and uh, YouTube and subscribers were coming on board and so forth and between that and the kids book I kind of chose game rave just because I've got everything behind me I don't have to write any of it or draw any of it. I can just talk about it um, So I'm hoping with that bi-weekly schedule coming up next year that I can sit down on the off week and actually get back to drawing and illustrating and um, Hopefully making another kids book or if not at least continuing the other book project that is video game related um, but yeah so um, in trying to game plus mode the room and everything, um, I began to realize that uh, there's such a thing as being too prepared. I know you, it, you can never be too prepared, but you can be too prepared. And part of that problem was that I had like everything hooked up to my one center, like PlayStation, Neo Geo, Laser Active, Sega Steam, uh, etc. Like it was just all hooked up. And it was just like, you know... My poor Turbo Duo, which needs to have one of its capacitors replaced because there's a single sound channel not working. I opened it up and uh, my Beyond Shadowgate copy was in there. And to give you an idea of how long it's been since I've touched that system, the reason Beyond Shadowgate was in there is because I was helping a friend uh, with video footage for their YouTube uh, channel they were trying to work on and so forth. And I'm almost positive that was like four years ago, if not longer. And seeing it like that in the same spot and realizing it's been that untouched i was like oh no 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 like this fucking stops right now so that's why um if you do follow me on patreon even if you're not an actual uh, donator um i mentioned how 2018 was going to be the year of the games i already own um so to help that along i basically broke up my for lack of it, it wasn't really an enter entertainment center it was more like kitchen cabinets i assembled to do a little stand um, I kind of obliterated that into multiple stations, and one of those is actually a dedicated PlayStation 1 setup. And you guys have seen pretty much everything that's going to be in these photos from before. 
but I wanted to give you an idea of how my mindset works and like you know what I'm doing when I'm not talking to you guys. So uh, give me a second while I figure out if I'm going to do shaky cam or just set the tripod. Hold that thought. Tripod it is. So you guys have seen this before if you've watched my older game room videos, but uh, this is a sharp uh, CRT component television, old school big ass tube TV. Um, this is actually the stereo system I won from the biggest PlayStation fan years ago. And this is going to be where I'm going to be spending most of my time in 2018. Um, when you have that many games and you realize you've only probably played maybe like a 20th of them, um, it's time to change those things. And even if it's just playing, like, you know, I know I'm not going to invest a full season in maybe a baseball game, but... I want to be able to actually play it so I can actually do the review and find trivia for you guys and talk about it and create new subset collections, things like that. And one of the problems, and I've mentioned this before, is when everything was hooked up to the uh, capture card, even if I was just playing a game for my own fun self, I always felt pressured. Like, I, have to, I, have, I should be taking screenshots, I should be recording, um, you know, what's, let's, let me go in accurate detail about, you know, blah, blah, blah. And... I don't feel that when I'm in the living room of the PlayStation 4 because nothing's hooked up to it. Um, it's just itself on the TV with my 360. And I realized in order for me to get that groove back, that I can just sit down and enjoy a game and not need to be in game rave mode while I'm doing it, um, that is this baby. Now, um, originally this was its kind of own stage with a couple of systems hooked up, but I actually had a CRT cable uh, split going back to that one so I could record it if I was playing it to begin with, just for ease of sake. Uh, or sake of easiness? Yeah. But no more. I basically removed everything from this station. All that is in this baby is just the actual PlayStation. Um, this is actually a day one uh, SEPH 1001. I actually have good old gold-tipped audio cables going to the surround sound system. Uh, the upscaled to CRT going into the CRT TV so it gets the absolute most um, clear picture possible and the surround sound speakers are all around the room so um, I can actually enjoy a PlayStation game. <laughs> Not really like how it was meant to be enjoyed per se but in the, in the best sound quality and the best video quality uh, ever. In fact, right before I started recording this video set, um, I jumped on eBay and bought a brand new laser assembly. Uh, so this day, I wouldn't say called a day one, but like sort of day one system is going to be top of the line output video audio and brand new laser drive, like a day one out of the box system. Um, there is one caveat when it comes to as far as like not GRTV, uh, but the only thing I'm going to allow myself is I'm going to have a notebook uh, just to keep notes, like a little trivia or tidbits, just so I can keep that aside when I do eventually go to record it and do things for Game Rave TV. And then, I haven't set it up yet, but the plan is I have like, what, 40 memory cards? I'm going to take 15 memory cards and I'm going to blank all of them, hopefully not erasing any save data I cherished from 20 years ago. And those are going to act as my save points while I'm playing the game. So, if, like for example, if I'm playing, say, 007 Racing, oh, um, memory card number one will be level one. Memory card number two will be level two, etc. That way, I don't have to worry about trying to go back or you know Game Shark levels or find a level select code. I can literally just grab the memory card and say, "Hey, here's what the level is. Plug it in, do the recording, get the footage, and we're good to go." But yeah, um, the picture quality on this TV is ridiculous. It's a sharp, um, it's a sharp SD TV apparently. Um, I have no idea what that means, but it's amazing. Uh, so you ever find one at a like Goodwill, pick it up. I I cannot with the upscaled CRT thing. It's ridiculous. I in fact I had Tekken three running on it last night just to do some testing for the stereo stuff, and it literally looked like a PS2 game. Like, the resolution is off the goddamn scale. It's, it's beautiful. Now this, as they say, is where the magic happens. Uh, this is actually my Game Rave TV setup. This is where I record all the gameplay footage, um, take screenshots, all the good stuff. Here I have my second PlayStation. Um, all these PlayStation, or all these PlayStation, all these game systems that are hooked up on here, these are all connected uh, through a PAL SCART cable. Uh, which is really good quality on its own. It was, a like I think, better than S-Video at the time. Um, and all those SCART cables are going into a SCART uh, connector box, 
and that is leading to an HDMI upscaler, which then goes into my Elgato, which goes on the computer and then to the TV. Uh, this is actually a Sony 3D monitor that I adopted from an old kiosk uh, when I was back at GameStop. It has no stand, <laughs> and the 3D glasses are cracked, but it makes a really good monitor, especially for um, PlayStation 1 games. Now, the only catch with this setup, and it's more of a back-end thing than anything, is that because I'm upscaling with the HDMI, the HDMI doesn't have a 4x3 ratio. Everything is on widescreen, so when I'm playing and recording, um, things are just a little bit stretched. Uh, that's why when I go into uh, Adobe Premiere, um, I have to resize it so it's back to the original 4x3 ratio. That was one of the problems that a lot of people had with the 5 second project was that I unintentionally left it in widescreen mode um, and I ended up re-releasing it in the 4x3 ratio. I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but apparently people <laughs> had a problem. Um, if you, you tilt this guy, uh, you can see my babies. Uh, good old Sega Saturn, PlayStation, uh, Neo Geo, this is actually the US Neo Geo, uh, the SCART adapter, um, a TurboGrafx-16 with CD and 3.0 card, uh, and my Dreamcast. Uh, just to prove I'm not <laughs> making things up, if you open up the TurboGrafx, Beyond Shadowgate. It's been like that for four years. It's kind of depressing. Eventually, I'll hook that system back up. There, oh. Turbo Graphics was actually my first complete library to this day, and Magical Chase was out of the last game I bought for about 150 bucks. God, 17 years ago, give or take. Oh, things change. Now, to the left of my computer desk is what I call the Big Bertha section. Um, this uh, area is uh, one for my old school 98 uh, tower that I bought from a Savers, and thanks to Becky's random parts uh, collection got upgraded and with the help of uh, Dizzy, uh, my online friend, uh, I have a Plexer drive in there and that is how I was able to correctly archive and dump the online connection CD um, and NBA 2Ball. So if you do a Google search, you can find that online now. Um, I actually have been using this um, kind of like as a hit or miss type thing, just doing goofy things and so forth. Hopefully, besides just doing the redump uh, projects, I can also eventually hook up the GameShark hacking utensils once again and you know start making my own codes or updating my GameSharks through this instead of having to do manual uh, code entry. Um, over here is my uh, Neo Geo MVS and my Laser Active. Laser Active, I think one day I will do a pause mode on, even though it's not necessarily one of the systems I cover, the Sega CD attachment makes it count as far as that goes. Um, the, the the Laser Active is a laser disc uh, player, and <laughs> it's probably one of my f like. There's literally nothing to play on it anymore. I mean, Chicago Blues, Chicago Blues is amazing, and I love the Manhattan Requiem. Is it Manhattan Requiem? I think it's Manhattan Requiem. Um, but <laughs> If you're going to collect a system, make sure there's games you actually want to play on it. Um, with, with the Laser Active, there's like 18 games, and like five of them are just not even games. They're like virtual demonstrations and so forth. But it's such a it's such a 90s piece of technology that I always, always wanted it um, when I first saw it in Die Hard Game Fan magazine years ago. Um, the MVS is actually like my favorite thing. Um, I play that before I play the CD, just to see if what changes I have, it's one better with the controls, yada, yada, yada. Um, what's interesting is, I've mentioned before that this was made by Jamma Nation X, uh, just fantastic guy, great site, amazing additions. Um, I don't know if I'm just late to the party or if he actually just released it, but he released an adapter where you can plug a Jamma board into the teeth part of the Neo Geo's motherboard and play... Oh, no, I'm assuming you play JAMA arcade boards through your Neo Geo, um, which would make be awesome if it's true, because I have a UN Squadron slash Area 88 arcade board that I bought years ago when I had a, uh, a Super Gun that I sold off to get the consoleized MVS, and I love Area 88 and UN Squadron on the Super Nintendo, and I kind of miss playing the arcade game, <laughs> so I might treat myself to the adapter um, later, maybe not early next year, because uh, there are bills to pay this year. So yeah, so from left to right... This is my gaming setup. Everything I need, all in easy reach. And then for people that have seen the picture of my game wall, I took that before I moved everything else back into the room. <laughs> Let me turn this light off here real quick. 
So yeah, that's usually what's sitting in front of the game wall. A um, whole bunch of cool stuff. What's nice is with the Living History Project now caught up through December, and I'm probably going to start tackling January games just to get that done. Uh, these boxes right here are all the magazine ads. I finally started adding them to archive.org. Uh, there's only about three ads right now, but it's, it's going to be good. Eventually I'll figure out how to get them onto the site, uh, probably through embedding, because WordPress doesn't allow for certain codes to happen, and that's what archive.org uses, so we'll tackle that. And then, just for posterity's sake, um, I actually moved all the shelves from the front room back into the game room, so my closet slash what used to be the green screen for the show is now all the greatest hits, Neo Geo CDs, my arcade stuff, Dreamcast, and then all the system boxes and everything. Eventually this room will be like 100% awesome and clean and won't look like a garage sale going wrong, but yeah. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, 2018 is going to be the year of games I already own and need to play. <sighs> I don't know why I'm out of breath. That's not a good sign. So uh, with that said, um, I hope everything's going cool for you guys. The year's almost up. Uh, there's probably at least another two episodes left before we call it a year, um, including the top 10 games of 2017, or 2017, of 1997, where we drop the biases and just call out those games that just whomped all kinds of ass. Um, I do have another VHS tape to put into the archive that the Patreon folks already know about. Uh, it is actually based off of Sony and sponsoring the ESPN games. Um, I just don't know if it's actually related to Cool Borders or if it is uh, related to the ESPN Extreme games. So we'll see that and hopefully have, hopefully have it online this weekend. Uh, that being said, guys, have a great weekend. If you're watching this on the weekends, otherwise have a great week. Um, I will see you next week on an actual real episode of Game Rave TV. Um, hopefully after enjoying a game of my new setup. Um, other than that, Christmas season's coming up. Um, hopefully you guys um, have all been nice and not naughty. Um, this morning I actually took a whole bunch of brand new toys uh, to Toys for Tots, uh, including uh, like art, little artistic sets and uh, puzzles and um, what else did I buy? Like Lego sets and things like that. So if you can, donate or at least you know make someone else smile who may not ha be able to have the stuff we have. Help them out. Do something nice. Let karma find its way. That being said, guys, as always, play, laugh, love. I'll see you next week. Take care.